today we heard a lot about a social animal, this one. And I'd like to talk about another type of social animal, this one, and to make some analogies, as you will see. So imagine you're in a tropical forest. It's not exactly like today's weather, but imagine you're in a tropical forest. You collect all animals you, you find, and you weigh them. You'll find there are some interesting ones and important ones. And so one important one will be ant and termites, which account for one-third of the whole biomass, the weight of animal, not number, weight. And if you think of vertebrates, the birds, the mammals, this is quite small. So ants are much more important in a tropical forest than are all vertebrates uh, together. And why is it so? And the reason is because they are social. And by being social, they can change their environment. And think of a nest of an ant colony. So here you have a human, and you can see an ant. Maybe you cannot see it because it's very small. But those small little creatures have created this quite amazing structure. And it goes underground here. It's another species, but you see the nest on the ground, which is a highly sophisticated construction. And all ant colonies have this type of complex constructions. So how is it possible? It's possible because they work in a highly coordinated manner. So here you have another type of uh, nest in some weaver ant. And as you will see, it needs a lot of cooperation to construct such a nest. So in that species, workers work together in a highly coordinated manner to bring the leaves together. And when the leaves are nearby, they even use the babies. Here you have a larvae, and the larvae, like the silkworm, is producing a silk. And with the silk, they tie the leaves together and they construct their nest. So the whole family is working in a highly coordinated manner. And sometimes those constru constructions can be huge. Here you have the colony of an attack colony species, and you see it's really huge. It's several meters. They will carry several tons of earth to construct their nest, uh, which is a very complex uh, structure. And those ants, what they do is they live in the nest, and they live from a fungus. And to grow this fungus, they go out, they collect the leaves, and you see them walking in a highly uh, coordinated manner along some roads, uh, which go back to the nest. And once they are in the nest, they grow this white matter, which is a fungus. And this is highly sophisticated. They produce enzymes to grow it. They limit the growth. They have a wall strategy in different parts of the nest to grow this fungus. So they invented agriculture, and this provide most of the food uh, in the colony. Ants did not only invent agriculture. They are also very good to breed cattle. And this occurs everywhere. Any ant has their own cattle. They will be aphids. And here you see a an ant which is feeding on what's coming by the rear part of, um, of the aphid. It's called in a nice word, the honeydew. And it's a very highly nutritive uh, nutrient. And so they take care of these cattle. They move them from one tree or from one plant to another one. And just as we do with our own cattle, when there are too many of them, sometimes they eat them. They also have a very important feature, which is division of labor. And this is just one example to show you uh, in the honeypot ants. Uh, so those ants live in desert habitats in Australia or in uh, the southern part of the US. And in summer, there's very little to eat and very little to drink. So what they do is that they store food in the abdomen of some workers. So those workers can stay several weeks or several months without moving, and they just store the food that they will give back to other workers uh, during the dry season. So an ant is not even able to walk, their so legs wouldn't touch anymore uh, the ground, so they are really storage vessel which work for the good of the colony. And for the story, children like to, to dig so for those ants in some part of Australia uh, many years ago, because they are very good to eat, they, they taste like honey. But now, of course, it's much more easy to go to a shop and buy a candle. <laughs> so what about humans? Are there similarities between humans and, and ants? And I, wish, I want to show you that it is the case. So humans are highly cooperative in most of the cases. So we have heard several talks today. So we, we humans have to cooperate. We cannot live alone. Like an ant, we cannot survive alone. We have to cooperate. But this, there's a complex dyna dynamics of conf conflict and cooperation. And I would like to make a few analogies. So the first one is a modification of the environment. Think of a city like New York. It would be very much 
like uh, this ant colony. So in this ant colony, you have a few million individuals. In New York, you have maybe 10 million individuals. But this is very similar. So they need to be organized. And just as the ants, they need to work in a highly coordinated manner to construct the city. Humans also need to work in a highly coordinated manner to make buildings, to make roads, and to regulate the whole organization of such a city. So it's a huge enterprise, and it's very much similar to this scale and this one. So for humans to live in the city, we needed, of our average time, we needed one thing, it's to have more food at one place. So very early, about maybe like 100,000 uh, years ago, humans had to move to find their food. They couldn't live in a single place. And staying in a single place, which allowed to construct cities and so, has been possible because of the invention of agriculture. Agriculture has been one way to produce a lot of food at a single space, which have allowed humans to create larger societies, to make cities, and so. So agriculture has been a very important uh, feature for humans. And also breeding of cattle has been important to bring meat, so we didn't have to go uh, chasing animals in the wild. They would be near the house and we could kill them when they are. So both these both inventions have been important to create uh, large, dense societies uh, like in which we live together. And the ne next important uh, stage for humans has been a division of labor. And division of labor is allowed to greatly increase productivity of humans. And it's only because of division of labor that we have very productive societies. And now, as are the similarities? I would like to mention only two similarities. The first one is a lifespan. So think here of lifespan. This, are, this is life, lifespan of mammal species. So it goes from one year to 100 years. And as you can see, this, oh, each dot is a, little, it's a species, and there is a strong correlation with the size of animals. So elephants have a much longer lifespan than the mice which live in one year. And here you see it's highly correlated with the biomass, uh, with the weight of those uh, animals. But there are two outliers here. Which are there? There are actually two social species. Uh, the first one is a naked mole rat here, and they live underground in families which are very similar to that of, of ants. You have one queen, a few queens which reproduce, and up to 100 workers which work for the whole colony, but they don't reproduce at all. And those ones have a much higher lifespan than other mammals of the same species. And the other social species, you, you know about it. <laughs> so what about social insects? Social insects have also a very long lifespan. <laughs> and here are different types of insects, of those we don't know. This will be like butterflies, like the flies, and so on. And usually insects don't live very long. They will live a few weeks, at most one or two months. But there are three groups of social insects which have a very long lifespan. And these are the termites, that are ants, and the bees. And some species, the queen can live up to 30 years, which is really amazing. It's more than 100-fold longer than the solitary insects. So the evolution of sociality has allowed to have a major increase in lifespan. And it would be like if you would find a primate which lived 4,000 years, 100 times longer than other primates. And what's very interesting is that queens and workers which have the same genome have very different lifespan. So workers live uh, only 10 or 20 times uh, less than the queens which have the same genome. So it's a very good system to study the genetics of aging. And another very important similarity between social insects and, and ants is self-medication. So when you live in group, so we had the first speaker today who was ill, so he did contaminate a few people. We are going to con contaminate a few more people after. And by the end of the day, he has been successful to contaminate at least 50 people, will be successful to con contaminate more. So living in a group is a perfect way to disseminate a parasite. And it's the same as in social insects. A living group, if one ant comes with a disease, it will spread in a colony. So they invented self-medication, and they do many things. But one of them is that they have antibiotics, and only bacteria can produce antibiotics. It's the same with humans, so we synthesize it. But at, in early days, we were using a bacteria which produce antibiotics to fight against other bacteria. So ants also raise, they have special organs to raise bacteria, and they have a lot of different antibiotics that they use in the colony. And there's all other type of uh, self-medication, 
But because of social life, she had also to invent self-medication to survive to parasites. Now, are there differences? There are several differences, but I want to point on only one which is, in my view, very important. If you think of ants on Earth since about 100 million years, and 100 million years ago, uh, the Earth was like that, you had those type of organisms, you had a few mammals, but very few mammals, and you had no humans for sure. So ants are social since, since 100 million years. Now, if you think of humans, sociality is very, it's very recent. First of all, humans are on Earth since only about 2 million years. So it's very recent. It means in terms of lifespan of on the Earth, humans just appeared very recently. And humans were, were quite rare on, on, on Earth until quite recently. If you think of human population, so uh, if you think now we are about 7 billion, but even 2,000 years ago, there were only a few million people, a few million humans on Earth. So humans were one of the many species. They were just almost absent. You could maybe sometimes find a few of them around, but it's not like now. Humans were very infrequent. And so it's only very recently that the population size has increased. And now we are 7 billion. And if you think of the biomass of humans, there's another organism which has the same biomass. Which one? Ants. Ants and humans have exactly the same biomass. So last year, humans just reached the level of ants in terms of biomass on Earth. <laughs> and so why, why did it take so much time for humans to reach this biomass? And as I mentioned, it's because we had to live together to create large groups. And this needed agriculture. Agriculture is very recent. It's about 10,000 years old. Uh, cattle breeding is very recent, uh, villages, cities, it's a very recent innovation. And really what has allowed population to increase once we live together, it's an uh, invention of division of labor, which has increased productivity, and also not only in antibiotics, but hygienic behavior. And it's very recent, it's really how we manage water in cities, even more than antibiotics, which has greatly decreased mortality, and allowed us to live in large cities. Otherwise, we couldn't live in large cities. Everybody would die in a, few, in a few days if we would pee everywhere. So it's really hygienic behavior, which evolved 80 million years ago uh, in ants, which is only a few hundred years old in humans, which allowed us to create those complex uh, cities like we find in ants. Now, to finish, I'd like to mention a few things about current work. And Daniel is in this audience. Uh, she developed, so ants are a fantastic system to study behavior, but you have to follow them. And to follow them in a colony, it's very difficult to, to do. So we had to develop a system, a code bar, which will allow us to take picture every half second in a colony <laughs> with infrared, so we can follow all ants in the colony and know exactly what ants is doing at any, uh, any time. I don't have a code bar on uh, Danielle, so I don't know exactly where she is, but we could have a code bar on everybody and follow maybe humans in the same way, but it's more easy so far to do it with ants. And I'll just show you a few results. So here are the ants with a code bar. Every ant has a small number. We can know what they are. Now we can translate them in the, be in the colors, and we can follow their behavior. We, we can track colonies during weeks, so we know exactly who is, who is where in the colony. Uh, this is just a small movie to show you what they've done in the last uh, 20 seconds. But we know exactly who is doing what. Here you have the brood, which has the larvae and the babies. And then we can also look for interaction within the colony. And here, for example, we start with a blue ant, and we look, we interact with whom? A yellow line is an interaction. And we can see the spread of interaction or spread of information in the colony. And so you can exactly track. So if an ant will come with some information, how does the information spread within the colony? And this we'd like to do with humans, but it's not so easy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you can, people try to do it with Facebook and such things, but you have only limited information. But here we can have full information. So it's a fantastic system uh, to study how information works uh, within the colony, how it is spread, and so on. And so, for example, you can construct network of interaction. Uh, this is a network which is done on two weeks of uh, interaction within the colony. And you can see here's the queen. She's interacting with one group of ants. There's another group of ants, and I will show that different. These are nurses, the one who feed the brood. The yellow one are the one going outside, the one which uh, catch the food. 
And the green one is an intermediate group which actually bring, takes the food from those one, give it to this one. And those one never uh, don't interact very much with the blue one. So it's really a, a division of labor, so also for interaction uh, within the colony. And so from that, you can hear, for example, in two weeks, you can know exactly who was where at any time, time point. So here you have a colony, here you have the nest entrance, here you have the brood. This is the blue ants we were seeing before. They stay very much close to the brood. During the two weeks, they don't move very much. The foragers, that the entrance, they stay mostly here. And here you have the intermediate group of ants which, ma which makes an interaction between them. And we can also look where do interaction occur. And we can see, for example, the nurses and the nest patrollers interact in this area. And for example, the same nest patrollers and the foragers, they would interact in other places. So we can really look where interaction occur, what regulates uh, uh, those type of interaction, effect of colony size, and we can manipulate things. In humans, we can make observation, but manipulation is more difficult. It's difficult to remove one half of the city or to, to remove individuals which are in front to make interaction. And these are all questions we can do with uh, social insects. Another interesting feature <laughs> is conflicts. Like in all animal societies, ants are social, and all social organisms have conflicts. And why is it so? It's because we are not genetically identical. So cells within an organism are genetically identical, so there's no conflict until there's a mutation which gives uh, rise to cancer. But b before cancer, there's no conflict within an organism. And if you think of a social insect colony, they are highly related, but sometimes you can have several queens or queens mate with several males. So you have different groups within a colony, and you can have a lot of different types of conflicts. I won't have time to discuss those conflicts, but we have done extensive studies about that. And ants have evolved over 100 million years, many mechanisms to decrease conflicts. And the larger the colony is, the more sophisticated are mechanisms to decrease conflict. And I just want to m mention one mechanism. So when you have two, two queens, uh, workers which have different mothers, they have different orders because there's a genetic component to order. And those workers have different orders. But to prevent that, what they do is that they spread, they share orders to become more equal to each other uh, within the colony. And on that, I thank you. <laughs>